So Fergal there talking us through some of the cultural iconography within Notre Dame. One thing that I do want to focus on, which is also crucially important, is the musical aspect of that building. Margot Fasler is a specialist in medieval music, sacred music and theology. She's from the University of Notre Dame in Indiana, joining us now. For those of us who are not aware of, say, the Baroque, the sung masses, the high masses that take place, just talk us through what you could hear in Notre Dame. Well, the Cathedral of Notre Dame, of course, has a medieval acoustic. And so that means that you have a very high... Uh, reverberation. So it's excellent for chant. And um, one of the most exciting times in my life, and I, I speak here as a medieval musicologist, I just want to express to, uh, to all of our friends in France how devastated those of us in this field are at this particular moment, because the Cathedral of Notre Dame is, in a sense, uh, our homeland. And this is where so much of the music that is so important in our field was uh, was first composed in the late 12th and 13th century during the very time that the cathedral was being built. There was the Notre Dame School. And um, so the particular acoustic of the cathedral was something that we could test. It was over a decade ago that a group of us gathered and we had a wonderful concert uh, in the cathedral of music that was composed there. I wrote a book on some of the monophonic or single voice chants. And it was one of the most exciting moments in my life as a, as a music historian and as a musician to be there at the moment. I can remember as a young American graduate student, when I first finally came to Paris and, and saw the cathedral, I, I fell to my knees and wept. I mean, this is, this is, this is our building worldwide. So um, those of us who are in the field of music are heartbroken. This has to do as well with those of us who are organists, because uh, since the 15th century, there have been great organs in the cathedral. And I'm sure that that's one of the major losses. Olivia Latry, uh, who is the organist there in charge of the, of the uh, cathedral now, must be totally devastated, as we all are. Um, the great composer Louis Vierne was there from 1900 to 1937, and he died at the console. He fell over and and made his final note with his face on the keyboard. So we have such a history of music in that building, and, uh, and our hearts and our minds and our souls are, are going out to, to the people of France and of Paris today. Margot, we can hear the passion in your voice. What have we lost? Well, I mean, the art historians can tell you what we've lost better than I can. I keep thinking of those 13th century rose windows. But you know, that cathedral was begun uh, by Louis VII. And I wrote a book on Chartres Cathedral, and his wife was Chartrain. And that's why uh, Our Lady of Chartres is featured there in the sculpture. So this history begins um, right in the 1160s. And the major part of the cathedral took about 100 years to be, uh, to, to be built. So this is the very time when it was that musicians were creating so much new music for that particular cathedral, which was dedicated to the Assumption of the Virgin Mary. That is August 15th. And Louis VII had not been able to produce uh, a male heir. And when he did, in 1165, it was Philip Augustus. And so it was this, uh, this celebration of his own heir his male heir, the only one he could produce by this Chartrain woman, that uh, led him to, to wish to have this monument and to connect it to the Feast of the Assumption, which was close to the time when his, when his male heir was born. So, so much of the music is written for the Virgin Mary that we've studied. And, uh, and it was there at the Cathedral of Notre Dame that musicians learned how to write down precise rhythms for music, for musical repertory. And so, the place of this cathedral as a cradle of our, of our musical guild is uh, very much tied to the innovations that the composers uh, of the Notre Dame school in the late 12th and 13th centuries led. And it's music that went throughout all of Europe. So for those of us who study European music, it's absolutely crucial. We find uh, evidence of it in, in Scotland. We find it in Germany. We find fragments of this particular notation going out throughout, uh, throughout Europe. 
And the music is glorious, of course. And so those of us who study music history, that's one of the things that we, that we celebrate with our students and that we, that we concentrate on. And we've always had that building where we could turn to it and think about its acoustics and think about the ways in which medieval music fit into it. You know, even though there have been many changes over time, we all know that. But still to have it there has meant so much to us. So, um, so it, it, I, I, I pray that it's going to be restored and I'm so thankful that the walls still stand. Margot Fasler, thank you so much for taking us through this musical, historical journey through Notre Dame. It's been absolutely fascinating to speak to you. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. And we do appreciate your expertise and bringing us an insight into another aspect of this building that potentially so few of us possibly would have recognized given that we look at, the, we talk about the iconography of the art, but the music as well. Margot, thank you so much. We're just getting images into the BBC from within Notre Dame. These are some of the first images coming into us here in the newsroom from within where we are looking now at Wow, the devastation that has taken place in Notre Dame Cathedral. Bearing in mind this cathedral has been burning, the flames blazing for hours. We are now looking at some of the devastation that has taken place. And it is hard to believe that this has been taking place right in the centre of Paris, within Notre Dame, a cathedral that is so important, not just historically, not just religiously, but also musically, as we were hearing there. This building means so much in so many ways to so many different people. These are the first images that we are seeing of the devastation from within Notre Dame. <laughs> 